Hi folks, I'm Matt Doyle, MLSsoccer.com's armchair analyst, and welcome back to another episode of Between the Lines. We've talked a bit on this show about the death of the central attacking midfielder, the true 10, the true playmaker, who would sit centrally, dictate the pace and tempo of the game, and pick up 15 to 20 assists per season. These players are, by and large, either all extinct or working in different spots on the field. So what's replaced them in the middle? For most teams, it's the box-to-box -box midfielder. Unloved, unappreciated, and misunderstood. Let's peel back some layers here. First, let's understand that using a box-to-box -box midfielder or midfielders doesn't limit your flexibility. Portland, who are primarily a possession team, use a pair of box-to-box -box midfielders in Will Johnson and Diego Chara. LA is way more direct and way less concerned with possession, and they use one box-to-box -box midfielder in Marcelo Sarvas and one more holding midfielder in Juninho. And then there's Colorado, whose ultimate style is still up for debate. They use one true attacking midfielder in Dylan Powers, one true defensive midfielder in Henry Thomas, and then one box-to-box -box midfielder in Nathan Sturgis. If you're going to use two box-to-box -box midfielders, as Caleb Porter does with Portland, the key is for the pair to develop a mutual understanding and chemistry. If one goes forward, the other has to do the dirty work of the D-mid, especially if there's a bad turnover somewhere else in midfield. Just as important, maybe even more so if you want to be a good possession team, is that one of the pair always has to make himself available as an outlet, both in attack and in possession. All that pinging the ball around does no good if there's no one there to make either the supporting or final run. It takes a while to develop that sort of chemistry, and if it goes bad, you leave yourself open for all sorts of unpleasantness. Toronto FC, for example, are another team that uses a pair of box-to-box -box midfielders, and it's safe to say they haven't quite got the timing down. LA's approach is a bit more conservative because Juninho acts almost as a regista, rarely affecting play in the box itself. Marcelo Sarvas, because of Juninho's defensive chops, is free to push as high as he wants quite often, sometimes even acting as an auxiliary striker. Of course, physically this asks a lot of Sarvas, who always has one of the messiest heat maps in the league. He doesn't have to generate offense. That's the job of Robbie Keane and the wingers and Landon Donovan if he's there. But he always has to be available on both sides of the ball. In attack, he could be in the six-yard box. In defense, he could be all the way back at his own end line. The freest of the group is Sturgis because the positional responsibilities of Thomas and Powers are so prescribed. That's left the eight-year veteran something close to free reign in choosing where and when he wants to support, and he's been damn near flawless at it. To put it into perspective, since the beginning of May, Mike McGee has exactly one more league goal than Sturgis does. That's a legitimate threat coming out of central midfield. And the fact that Sturgis is now on his 16 in his eight-year career speaks to just how hard it is to properly use a box-to-box -box midfielder. It's not instinctive for most coaches because even though these guys line up in the central position under the spotlight, they're not meant to be the center of attention. They're not meant to be the central focus. They're not what you build your team around. But damn if they're not a great weapon to have. That'll do it for this week's Between the Lines, and we'll be back with another episode next week.